Just before the formation of the Alliance of the Crystal, when the Skeksis had finalized their hierarchy, Skexo was suddenly proclaimed not a king, but an emperor. A Skeksis named Skexok was the first individual to officially address him as such, as he was one of the first Skeksis who became and remained fully loyal to Skexo. And because of that faith and loyalty, he would become a terrifying figure well known across all of Thra, the Ritual Master. As his name proclaims, Skeksok became the master of all the Skeksis' immortal rituals, including religious ceremonies, ceremonies of the sun, bizarre torture, and even the crystal baths. Although he cared less about the politics of the castle, he was quick to display his role as Skexo's closest advisor, and would often remain beside his throne, whispering secrets in his ear, or spreading his false prophecies and apparitions to all. His duties to the castle were imbued in his very being, and he saw every event favorable to the Skeksis as a possible new ritual, even carrying a knife specifically created for skinning Skektek. Although, to some, his actions seemed crazed, Skeksok viewed all laws, rights, and rules as absolute, and to break them would be heresy. After all, the Skeksis were never-ending, and never-ending beings were the gods of this world he swore to protect and serve. Because of his status, Skeksok was also one of the most vain of all, covering himself in lavish, rich red robes, adorned with golden armored plates, jewelry, and ornamentation, believing the colors to reflect his regal power. Upon his crown, a high crest in the shape of a crescent claw, a decoration he had favored for many trine, much like Skeksos, but also a symbol of a broken circle, which was incorporated to reflect his fractured view of the world. And, of course, because of his ceremonial duties, Skeksok was also the most concerned about the crystal's failing powers, as he knew very well it was quite literally the source of their life. When Gelfling Essence was discovered soon after, the Ritual Master not only viewed this as a paradigm shift for their culture, but, naturally, a new and very important ritual. The drinking of Essence would become the new religious rite, a practice in immortality. However, when the last remaining vial of essence was stolen, and Skektek was ultimately blamed for it, it was finally time for the Ritual Master to unleash his most powerful ability, the Art of Torture. Skeksok personally escorted Skektek down to his chambers, and at the suggestion of the Chamberlain, he used his most favored form of ocular castigation, the Peeper Beetle, which was a carnivorous creature native to the Crystal Desert that preferred the soft meat of eyes. It was a torture specifically reserved for the Skeksis, and Skeksok was very proud of his role. Preceding the Gartham Wars, when nearly all of the Gelfling had been eradicated, Skekso became too ill to attend one of the ceremonies of the sun, and later crumbled to death before their eyes. Although all of the Skeksis were deeply affected by this, this event shook Skeksok to the core, as his belief centered around their immortality. They had not just lost an emperor, but were slowly beginning to lose their entire religious structure. Even though Skeksok was third in line for the throne, he chose not to take part in the trial by stone which saw the Gartha Master and the Chamberlain face off. But in reality, this was actually a methodical political move, as he knew he would not be able to contend with the Gartha Master's brute strength. Instead, he allowed Skek Ung to take control, and then, subsequently fail after his Gartham did not capture the Gelfling. This gave Skeksok the chance to call upon his crystal bats to remedy the situation, and regain some of his control and favor. When Kira was finally brought to the castle, and Jen returned with the shard, the third great conjunction was upon them. Now was the Ritual Master's time to ensure the Skeksis reclaimed their never-ending existence. He was quick to dismiss Skek Ung's suggestion to drain her, and soon after had his chance to finalize his plans by fatally wounding Kira with his ritual dagger, or presumably what he imagined to be the finger of God. But it was already too late, for Jen had successfully healed the crystal and restored balance to Thra, ending the Ritual Master's reign forever. Skeksok's counterpart was, fittingly, an Uru of the same title, Urza the Ritual Guardian. Urza is actually the very first mystic that we see in the Dark Crystal, 
crafting the sand paintings, the same paintings that Augur would later utilize in Age of Resistance. He was the one responsible for building forms of spiritual energy, and would comb and brush the dust of Amethyst, Opal, Agate, and Onyx to manifest these energies, uncovering important prophecies. The light comes from his natural harmony with Thra and her rituals. The dark comes from Skeksok's violent, torturous rituals which were unnatural to the order of the planet. Although Skeksok was the master in charge of overseeing all ceremonies for his self-appointed gods, it is interesting that one ceremony he never created was a funeral. It speaks volumes about his obsessive behavior. Because he was so fascinated with only the life of the Skeksis, he never accepted death in any form, making the Skeksis and their beliefs even more unnatural than they already were. A creature who cannot accept death does not attain true wisdom, living in fear, surrounding yourself with a religion that in the end is based on lies, remorse, and sorrow. And perhaps that is the most frightening aspect of the Ritual Master. Well, my friends, that's going to do it for my video on the Master of Terror and Torture, the Ritual Master. Now it's time for you guys to leave all of your thoughts and opinions down below in the Great White Void. And I'll see you guys back here for the next video very soon. Stand here.